Welcome, everybody, to our uh, Zebra Technologies and Avalon Integration podcast. This is our first in a series of podcasts that we hope you find will be very beneficial to your business. Uh, I'm Anthony Grasso. I'm the regional channel manager for Zebra Technologies in the New York metro area. And I'd like to introduce Mike Kula. Mike, how you doing? How you doing, Anthony? Good to see you. Good to see you again, too. Mike, uh, tell us a little bit about Avalon and your role within Avalon. Sure. So, um, hello, everyone. I'm Mike. Thanks for joining us today. I'm with Avalon Integration. Um, I'm vice president of sales, been with the company since our inception in 2001. Uh, Avalon basically services clients that are looking to implement and support uh, barcoding and auto ID related technologies and supplies. So, think of everything from a a simple barcode reader to a mobile computer to the software, the labels that come out of the printer, and then who do you call if you need help when the thing stops working? Um, our clients comprise uh, companies that basically manufacture, distribute, and sell products across a, a, a huge swath of a vertical market. So anyone from pharmaceutical to consumer products to, uh, you know, we have clients that have brick and mortar retail locations. So I'm looking forward to, to our discussion today, Anthony. Yeah, so am I. And so Mike and I have had the opportunity to work together for six years now, going on seven years. So my main res responsibility at Zebra is to help Mike and his team manage their relationship with Zebra as a manufacturer. Because we, you know, we are a manufacturer of hardware, but companies like Avalon, they implement and integrate solutions, including our hardware. And one of the, the topic that we wanted to talk about today, Mike, is the enterprise mobile computing space and really the adoption of the Android operating system platform. And I know there's a lot of history. There's a lot of history between the two of us. Mm -hmm. I think we combined, we have almost 50 years of experience. I, I started with Symbol Technologies back in the late 90s when Symbol was predominantly a, a scanner company. Uh, we had a, a, a small mobile computing portfolio, but it was really for inside the four walls. It wasn't until um, Motorola acquired Symbol in the mid 2000s um, and then broke the company up into Motorola Solutions, where our enterprise portfolio really took off. And then as we merged with Zebra Technologies, it's really when our Android platform really took off. But really, we want to hear from your perspective as a provider of solutions to customers, um, really the history from your perspective, how we got here to the Android space, the evolution of the enterprise mobile computing, and um, what are the greatest changes you've seen with your customer base over the years? Yeah, good good question. Yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine. I started um, working in this, uh, on my career um, in, you know, barcoding technology in early 90s, right? 1994 was my first uh, exposure to this technology it actually has a as a customer, as a user. Okay. Um, and it's hard to imagine we're now in 2020 and, you know, we're, you and I are kind of some of the old guys now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, um, but I think it's important to uh, really understand the difference between, you know, consumer and what we're saying enterprise mobile computing is. So, you know, everyone knows what a consumer device is, right? It's, right. it's, it's your Apple phone. It's your Samsung phone. Um, Great products, um, but typically, you know, fall short of enterprise grade quality. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you have a, a, a mission critical business application, barcode scanning, I'm jumping on and off of a, a forklift every day or in and out of a truck, um, and I need a device that's going to be durable, um, you know, that Apple device and that Samsung device, you may be able to put a, a, a case around it to try to protect it, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be there and, and support you long term. Um, so I think it's real important to, to kind of understand, um, you know, where we came from um, and where we are today. So, you know, where we came from, if you think about it, um, you know, early 2000s, there would probably be, I would say, 10 really large um, manufacturers in our in our market. Um, right. Com companies with names like Norand or handheld products or LXE or Telzon, right? You don't even hear about those guys anymore because nope. they're all gone, 
right? They're all gone. They all got consolidated down to pretty much three dominant players. Zebra, uh, obviously being the largest, right? I think you guys command uh, an 80, 85% market share or something I heard recently. Um, on the mobile computing, yeah. On the mobile computing, right? You're number one in scanning. You're number one in barcode printing. Um, so you guys have really, really become the, the dominant player. Um, you know, there's still a lot of, uh, of niche players out there. Um, you know, most of those are, are Asian based companies. Um, they have products they're trying to get into, into this market space. Um, we haven't seen, um, a tremendous adoption of that because primarily they don't have the infrastructure, right? They don't have the partner network, you know, like we're a zebra partner. Um, you know, they don't have, a, they don't have a network like that to, to deploy product here. You know, if you were to ask them, Hey, where do I get the unit fixed when I drop it and I break it? Um, you know, if the answer is I got to ship it back to Asia, that's really not going to work for you. Right. So, or they rely on you to do that or they rely on us to do that. Right. And, and, you know, again, that's, uh, um, you know, last thing I want to be doing is, is actually using a screwdriver to fix a mobile computer. That's something that would rely on the manufacturer. Right. To do. Right. So, um, so I think, you know, it's real important to understand who the players are and, you know, zebra being the largest, um, also where we came from. So, you know, when I started back in, in, in the nineties, um, you know, the dominant operating system on, uh, this device was DOS. Um, you know, we, we recently hired a couple new people in, in our organization. They're in their, in their twenties, in their twenties. Um, yeah. and when I mentioned the word DOS, they had no idea what I was talking about. Uh, it'd be right? cool if we could do a, a, a poll during a podcast to see, uh, how many people actually know what DOS is. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so, so basically DOS is a character mode, as you know, Anthony, it's a character mode operating system. Um, you know, it was very proprietary, right? Every manufacturer that I mentioned, we had those 10, those 10 different manufacturers. They each had a little different version of DOS running on their mobile mm-hmm. computer because, you know, at the time and, you know, Symbol, which is where you start it, when you guys were making DOS devices, you guys used to make those out in Long Island, right? You That's would, right. You would design the inside board, the plastics that went around it, the screen, right? And it always had kind of a, 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 symbol, a symbol spin to it. Mm-hmm. Um so, you know, DOS was, was the dominant one. And, and back then, the only companies that really deployed that technologies were guys that had tremendous IT resources and large budgets, right? Because it was, it was hard. Um, then you saw, and there, here's another one that, you know, if I, I point this to my, my 20-year-olds, you know, that my 20-year-old group of uh, employees, I say, hey, what is POM? You guys know what the POM OS is, right? They all kind of look at you funny. And, you know, POM was you know, one of the first versions of, you know, the modern Android and or Apple iOS look and feel. Touch right? screen. Was, yep. Touch screen, you know, um, icons, no keyboard, all glass display. Use your stylus, um, all kinds of stuff. Style. Yeah, that's true. You couldn't even use your finger. You had to use a stylus. Right. <laughs> so, um, so, and then, you know, obviously uh, Microsoft entered that space and Microsoft was dominant. Uh, in the nineties, um, they wanted to dominate that, um, operating system, that mobile operating system. And they came out with windows mobile, um, and windows CE, which, you know, pretty much in our enterprise mobile space, um, that operating system didn't change, um, very much for probably like 15 years. Right. I mean, we were kind of stagnant, right. You guys would come out with new devices, um, but it was always the same old OS, right? Just a different version number. Yeah, CE5 or CE7. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, not a lot of uh, innovation there. Um, we were kind of, you know, fumbling along. And then probably what about, oh God, it had to be for you guys early, like 2007, 2008. Um, you guys came out with, uh, with a dual strategy because, you know, Android was obviously becoming a dominant player in the market. Um, you know, you could just look at the consumer side, right? Everyone had yep. an Android phone. Everybody or, had an Android phone, right? Or they had an Apple or they had an iOS phone, right? Flip phones were gone. Um, and then what ended up happening was, you know, um, the team at Zebra, uh, or I think you guys still were Motorola at the time. We were still, yeah. Um, you know, Motorola split the group, right? They said, oh, we're going to do Google phones. We're going to do phones over here, which they eventually sold to Google. And that was the Google phone right. system. Right. And then we're going to do enterprise computing over here. But that's where the partnership with Google really started. It, least, it is. 
It is. You're right. Because you guys had a lot of shared resources there and you guys adopted a dual strategy. So at that time you started, you know, when you would release a new product, it would come out with Windows CE or Windows Mobile and an Android offering. Right. And in the beginning, you know, people were still when we as a company were still selling lots of Windows mobile Windows CE devices over Android. And over time, we started to see that that shift and that change happen um, as it became clear that Android was going to win. And, you know, Microsoft at some point said, hey, we're out of the mobile operating space. space. We're not even making a, a mobile you know, phone any longer. Right. We're just out of that that space. We're, we're, that was really the, the turning point when Microsoft said, hey, we're not going to support mobile Windows mobile anymore. That's when. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they gave us a hard date. Remember, it was uh, like 2020. 20. Yeah. That was it was the end of extended, extended support. Right. right? right. <laughs> I mean, you guys, they stopped supporting it probably like, you know, 2012, 2013. But they said 2020. Don't even call us, right? We're not even gonna we're not even gonna talk to you about it anymore. Um, and you know what was what was also interesting is I read um, or actually I attended a seminar once and someone talked about Microsoft was making more money on their patent, the the money that they would get off their patents from Google and Android on that operating system than they were on selling Windows CE and Windows Mobile. Now, I, I don't know that that's true, but they were pretty confident about it. I mean, right. it, it sounded plausible because, you know, Microsoft was in their way before Google. So anytime Google wanted to do something, if there was a patent on that, they had to pay a, a royalty to, to Microsoft. And um, but someone said, yeah, they went and they looked it up in, in, the, in the filings that Microsoft does. And, you know, there's a ton of patent royalties that they get from Google uh, for that operating system. So, you know, if I was you know Microsoft, why would I do that? If I, you know, why would I have, investment in this if I'm just getting getting paid on what we've already done and my market share is so small I can't be dominant right Microsoft always likes to try to be number one in every market and there was no way they were gonna they were gonna catch up to to Google when when Android really really embraced the market um, so you know so then what ended up happening you know was you had a great operating system you had uh, phones that were out there that were being used everywhere and all of a sudden, there was this huge proliferation of two-dimensional barcodes, right? Um, and it okay. started, on, started on your phone, right? How many times can you, you, you walk into a store and you can scan a, a, a 2D barcode and it takes you to a website, right, with your phone, with your camera on your phone? Um, you know, loyalty cards, right? Um, being able to scan off of a screen. Um, you know, I recently had a... a a product that I forgot what I bought, but it, it basically had a label. It was a food product and I scanned the label um, and it actually told me where it was grown off the barcode. Right. Um, you scanned it with your camera or the actual scan? I, I actually scanned it with my camera because I had my, my iPhone with me. Okay. And I was like, Oh, what's this barcode? I wonder where it goes. And I scanned it and it says, Oh, this was grown in such and such California. Right. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Right. Because normally you see product of the USA, but you don't know. You know USA is a big place. Right. right. I don't know where it was, where it was grown. And it, it literally said the, the city and state of where this product was grown. Um, so I kind of thought that was kind of cool. And, you know, you, as you know, from from being at the Sybil days, you guys were the first ones to develop the laser scanner. Right. Um, and right. I, I can't think of the last time you released a new product that had a laser scanner as the main feature. I mean, you still support it, you still offer it, but you know, everyone has really moved towards that two dimensional scanning capability using an imager, which effectively is a, is a camera uh, to do that. So, um, so now we have a, a dominant operating system. We have better scanning technology than we ever had. And then we have, you know, Android, right. And, and Android is really, um, it's scalable, right? In the, in the Windows CE world, again, you, you had resources that could do it. You had companies that could deploy that, but, um, but there wasn't a large ecosystem like there is with Android, right? If you think about your, your daily life, right, on your own phone, what do you use an app for? I mean, in my world, I use an app to record my mileage for work. You know, I record what I eat, calories, right? Um, Banking, right? You gotta you gotta do electronic banking, huh? Everything, paying bills. Oh, how cool is it to take your camera and take a picture of a check and yeah. not have to go to the bank, right? And it's I mean, deposited. I, I love that. 
and it's deposited. I love that, right? So, I tried doing that with Monopoly money once, but it didn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so I think that, you know, the key is you now have an ecosystem and you got, um, with that ecosystem, you have a lot of resources, right? That could develop applications. So again, you know, if you, you go out and you've tried to find a resource and says, I need, you know, I'm, I want to hire an IT person and I need a resource that could develop um, mobile applications for Windows Mobile and Windows CE. You know, your list was about this big. If you go out there now and say, I'm looking for an Android uh, application development person to develop uh, my Android app mobile applications, you know, that list is, it's it's enormous, right? So, um, so, you know, Android has really just allowed that, that um, uh, allowed us to scale to a point that we've never been able to since, you know, since I started in working with this technology in 1994. It sounds like that the Android platform, especially for you guys who, who again, integrate solutions has become a game changer. So that's, that's my question is why has it become such a, a game changer? But before we answer that, I think we need to take a commercial break and we'll be right back folks. Great. From unmatched data security to seamless TE app conversion, Android for Enterprise empowers you to enter the digital age with confidence. Make the switch and migrate to Android with Avalon integration. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Anthony Grasso from Zebra Technologies and Mike Kula from Avalon Integration. So, Mike, thanks again for taking us through that evolution of enterprise mobile computing and how we got to the Android platform. What I think we all want to know is why why is that Android platform such a game changer for customers out there looking to, uh, to implement uh, an enterprise grade uh, mobile computing solution? Um, so great question, Anthony. Uh, like I said before, you know, Android allows organizations of pretty much any size to develop those or, or implement that technology. Right. Um, and that's, that's really different. So for example, I have a, uh, uh, a large pharmaceutical client, um, and they had deployed, you know, barcoding technology. They've been using it since the 90s. Um, started in DOS and moved to Windows CE, and they were still on Windows CE up until about four or five years ago. Um, and they use that process everywhere through their distribution and manufacturing. And, you know, it was important for uh, inventory control, but most importantly, it was for air proofing, right? Because okay. As- As you might know, in in pharmaceutical, you know, when you ship a product, um, you have a batch number assigned to that, right, traditionally. And uh, that batch number really is there to um, facilitate if you have to recall that product, right? So that needs to be captured. So it's not like I'm shipping, you know, 10 bottles of X product. I'm shipping, you know, five bottles of X product with this batch number and five bottles of X product with that batch number. And if for some reason I find out I have a problem with this batches or this, this group of products, I know where that stuff has been sent, right? It doesn't intermingle, even though it looks the same. Um, so Android actually gave them uh, an ability about five years ago to kind of relook at their processes and, and redo their applications. And again, they have a large IT staff. Um, they absolutely have the financial resources to do it. They're kind of leading edge. Um, and now when you go look in their, their environment in less than five years, not only have we deployed Android applications that, you know, are touch based. So before everything in their organization was, you know, I had to push a key. Um, everything now is touch based. Uh, but they even have Android smart glasses linked to your guys, uh, wireless scanner. Right. That allows okay. them to do picking. So now a user can walk around and in their smart glass, it actually will tell them, go to this location and pick five of these and scan it. And he can scan it and it all comes up on the smart glasses. So, you know, something like that, trying to do that uh, in a Windows, old Windows environment or any other legacy operating system just wasn't feasible. It would never happen. Um, you know, now that they have, um, new standards in pharmaceutical, the G it follows a GSA one standard where basically on certain pharmaceuticals, um, they're now serialized. So remember we talked about, you had to scan a product and then you had to scan a batch. Right. Well, well now it's scan a product, scan a batch, scan the unique serial number of that product. Um, and that serial number is actually stored in a central database. And the real key for that is to prevent counterfeiting. Right. Because, again, if I'm a counterfeiter of, of pharmaceutical drugs, um, 
you know, it's real easy for me to make a bottle look like it's supposed to give it the same kind of batch number. So it all looks the same and, and sell that, but it's right. real hard when it's a serial number and, you know, talking to my client, you know, right now they're recording that serial number, um, uh, as it leaves their distribution center. Eventually they said that serial number is going to go all the way down to, you know, a, a pharmacist. So if, you know, you, you go in and, and ask for a prescription, that pharmacist is going to have to scan that serial number of the drugs that he's, he's, he's putting in your pill bottle for you um, to verify that it is quote unquote, or, or ensure that it's not, not counterfeit. So, um, you know, so when you think about that from their, their organization, you know, how they operate it, um, this goes kind of back to the, to the two dimensional scanning that we talked about, um, you know, at one time, they you know go back to my example of the five bottles, right? They could scan five bottles of this batch number, hit you know scan one bottle, it's this batch number, hit quantity five, and they captured all of that data. Now they have to scan all of these bottles, right, individually. So you know with the with the technology now, they can literally line up all of the product that has a multiple of barcodes. I think they can have up to twenty barcodes showing in the field of view and it will okay. read it all. It will decode it all. And it will put it into their applications with once one pull of the trigger. So, um, you know, huge in terms of being able to, to, to push product through from productivity because yeah, literally- just the efficiency and accuracy. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the serialization was going to kill them. So and then, you know, you look at clients then let's go kind of down the food chain of enterprises, right? I, I have a, a, well, I'll call a medium sized company, right? They had um, about 300 mobile computers deployed. Um, they manufacture products that service the building sector. Um, and uh, that technology was written, you know, early 2000s. Uh, the people that wrote that technology are, are, are getting older like us. <laughs> um, right. they're, start, they're starting to want to retire. Um, and they were having a hard time finding resources to support that or improve that technology, right? Because those tools, a lot of those tools aren't even available anymore, right? Microsoft has moved off and, and, and doesn't gone. support that. So they're gone. Um, so they actually moved towards um, uh, rewriting their technology uh, based on, on a, they actually wrote an Android app, right? Uh, their own, their own Android app to run on their devices. And um and yeah. they did that themselves or they used a, a third party to do that? They actually did it with about three people, is my understanding. Uh, wow. Three resources okay. and within months, you know, knew what the old application was doing and rewrote everything on the new application, plus some improvements, right? Talk to their users. Hey, we like this. We don't like that. Um, and, and rolled that out. And it's, it's, it's pretty astounding. I mean, you, when, you, when you go into this facility, nothing moves without it being scanned. Right. They're kind of unique. I mean, they're, 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 they literally, um, you know, for the type of products that they have, they also serialize products. So, you know, if they have, you know, five doors that are five white doors, each one has a unique serial number. And, and that's just a control that they have in place. And because um, uh, they want to know if, if we have a problem with the door, where exactly did it come from? Um, right. And what manufacturer did it come from? But, you know, here, you know, three resources, a couple months, able to, to convert and, and move on was pretty astounding. And then, you know, you know, when you, you look at the, what I'll call the smaller companies, right? And, you know, years ago, as you know, if you were, you know, when we were in the window space and someone would call you and say, hey, I'm interested in putting in, you know, mobile barcode data collection in my warehouse. And you would ask the question, great, what's your system that you guys run? QuickBooks, right? right? QuickBooks, you were like, ah, right? Because QuickBooks was really hard, right? And QuickBooks was not an expensive application, and it's real hard to justify how you're going to spend more money to put in a mobile app than you did for you know your financial system of record that's running. Um, but you know today, you know you look at QuickBooks. Another one I think was Microsoft Dynamics, where right? we used to run into a lot as well. Um, today, the the answer is well, let's go up to the Google Store, let's download the QuickBooks app or the Microsoft Dynamics app. Let's you know sign in with your credentials, right? And within minutes, you're you're running the in. app. Yeah, you're running, running your whole system. Running, you're running your whole system, right? Now, obviously, you're you know you're you're limited by the functionality that's in those apps because you don't control it. But effectively, those apps are free, 
right? Because you downloaded them for free. There's no cost to it, right? When you download connection to QuickBooks. And mm -hmm. we have lots of clients that in the past, um, you know, they couldn't embrace this technology because there was just no way to, to do it, right? They didn't have IT resources. They didn't have the budget. Now, you know, it's anyone. I can download that app, connect it, and I'm up and running. Well, it's, it's, it sounds very clear now that, um, pretty much any customer of any size really can implement these solutions. So I think what we, what we really want to talk about now is, you know, what are the most important factors a company doesn't matter what size they are? What are those factors that they have to look at, um, uh, before they actually go implement an enterprise mobile computing solution? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, normally when I'm talking to customers, you know, the first thing that we, we kind of go over, you know, everyone always has, everyone always has an idea in their head. Right. Like I'm, I'm a visual learner. Right. Right. So, so I got written on a napkin, basically. I got it in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's going to look like this. Right. Um, and normally what we kind of talk about are a couple things. One is is price point. Right. Um, scanning technology. Um, really important one that's often overlooked is the manufacturer's commitment. to OK. The state, right. Um, Product life cycle is one that's just not well understood yet. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then what happens after I deploy this, right? And who do I call when something breaks? And how do I get something fixed? Because things happen, right? Things break. So, you know, let's, let's go back to like price point. Um, you know, when you guys look at your product portfolio, and this was not the case, you know, in the 90s or early 2000s, right? You know, you wanted to buy a mobile computer, um, you better have 3,000 bucks. Yeah, right? and then you had a couple of choices, basically. And, so. and you had a couple of choices. I think now you guys have, just in the mobile computing space, mobile computer space itself, you have over 50 um, distinct models. Yeah. Right? And it's based on how that device is being used, what environment, right? All the way from exactly. that value tier device where it may be a single user that's using it all in, to the shared devices that are being used on multiple shifts to those uh, monster vehicle mounts that we put on forklifts. It's, you know, we have that exactly. wide array of products. Exactly. I kind of look at it as a good, better, best, right? Um, you guys have a good, better, best approach. You know, you have devices today that, you know, a client could buy for as little as, you know, $500, $600. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, most expensive device could be, call it 3500 bucks, right? For a vehicle mount, maybe vehicle mount, probably a little over $4,000 by the time you get all yep. the other pieces you need with it, right? Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty cool, right? That you guys can have that. That, that vary the product. So, you know, clients have lots of options now, right? Um, then, you know, we, you, within those options, you obviously got to look at scanning technology. So, you know, the first thing I, I talk to clients about is, okay, you're, you're buying a mobile computer or you want to buy a mobile computer, tell me what you're doing with it. You know, how far away is the user from scanning a barcode? Um, I recently went into a client and uh, we were looking to replace equipment that they had. And I was talking to the user and I said, all right, show me what you do. And he would basically drive a pallet jack around, pick up a case of, or pick up a pallet um, and move it to the, to the shipping area. They ship full pallets and he would get to the area and then he would get off his pallet jack and walk up and scan the location barcode and then get back on his pallet jack and pull the pallet out. And I was like, do you do that every day, all the time? He goes, every, every pallet. I said, how many pallets you move a day? He goes, oh, I don't know, 150, 200, 200 pallets a day, maybe. So I was like, he'd get on and off the truck 200 times. And, you know, the whole issue was he was using the wrong type of scan engine, right? He had a standard range scan engine and he needed a long range scan engine. Um, so, you know, understanding the application and, and getting the right scan optics is, is really, really important. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll go back to the, the, the client example I gave earlier with the, um, that, that did the, the, uh, building services stuff. And, um, when we were first talking to them, um, they were looking at a, uh, an Asian manufacturer, uh, happened to have a scan engine made by one of your competitors in it. Okay. And, and, you know, I was dealing with a, a purchasing agent and he said, you know, but it's, it's cheap. Look, look how much it only costs me this. And uh, remember, I said their product was serialized. 
So literally, you know, when you take like cabinet doors and you put them on a pallet, there could be 200 doors on that pallet. Okay. And their user would have to scan when they received them all 200, right, to bring it into their inventory. And I said, you got to do a scan test. And he says, what do you mean? He goes, it's the same scan engine as the, the manufacturer that makes it. I said, no, nah, it's the same engine, but it doesn't work the same. Um, and you know, that's, that's just my perception. It's not going to work the same. And he okay. actually, he actually went and did a scan test. He got out there with a stopwatch, gave his user and said, scan those as fast as you can. And then he gave him the other device, scan them as fast as you can. And that was the end of that discussion. He says, we're not using that one anymore. Okay. Right? Cool. Because <laughs> it just didn't, yeah, it just didn't work. So it just didn't work well for him. So, um, so, you know, I think scanning and imaging is kind of, uh, the key, you know, obviously, with a 2D imager, you can scan at any orientation. Um, you can scan screens. So, you know, I have one client that literally the barcode comes up on the computer screen at a pick station for the order, and that's what they scan. They don't need a piece of paper to scan an order number. They scan the screen. Um, so um, really, really kind of a key piece. And then, you know, again, you go back to what I talked about, manufacturer focus. So um, some folks you know, have dabbled with deploying consumer devices in an enterprise uh, application, right? right. And, and for the right size company and the right application, it, it may work for you, right? If you're a heating and air conditioning guy and you got five guys and Verizon's give, can they give you a five phone, a free yeah. phone? May, may make sense, right? But but typically, if, if you're um, looking for longevity and you want consistency across your platform, um, and enterprise, consumer devices are going to work. You're going to be forced to go towards the enterprise. And that then takes you back to the manufacturer's focus. So, you know, again, when we talked about, you know, when you guys were in the window space, you guys were kind of up on this high-end, expensive devices, not a lot of choices. Now you have devices that meet a whole breadth of, of requirements. You know, I think your cheapest device that I've seen is like $500 um, for a mobile computer. And, um, you know, that's huge, right? Because we've had clients that used to buy in that, what I'll call the, um, the better space. And now they're buying in the, in the good space, right? Because that, that, that device is just that much cheaper. It's, it's kind of worth it for them. Um, so they can do that. So I think, you know, when you look at whatever you're, you're, you're looking to purchase in terms of manufacturer, um, you got to look at their focus. And, you know, there's a reason why you guys have number one market share. I think the life cycle of the product too, goes into place. I know at Zebra here, most of our products will either have what we call a five by five or a four by four or a three by three. What that means is once we launch a product, that product is generally manufactured for five years. But after the product is end comes to end of life from a manufacturing standpoint, we still support it for another five years afterwards. Um, so basically you're getting that longevity of the device that you were talking about. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's a good place to, um, good lead in there. Right. Um, you know, I talked about before in the windows CE windows mobile space, we didn't really have any change for 15 years. And in, in, in fact, I have lots of clients, um, that, you know, I may have sold them something back in 2002 and they were still using that in 2017 right? Unchanged, right? Okay. How we originally set it up, it just worked. Um, now with Android, it, it's become a real OS, right? Um, and it's an education for clients in terms of you're going to have to um, upgrade it uh, when it's required. Um, you know, you're not forced to do it, but it's a good idea uh, to do that. Um, Android is moving with a new version of, of operating system every year. So, you know, they used to always be dessert flavors, you know, Oreo, right. Nougat, all that stuff. Um, they've now with version 10, which is the current release of Android, they've gone to number sequence, right? So version 10 came out around September of 2019. Um, I would expect version 11 is going to be coming out relatively in the near future, right? Um, I haven't looked to see exactly what the release date is, but it, but it's going to be there. Um, and, you know, the one thing that's been clear with Android is, um, you know, in the beginning, it was a very open architecture, right? Um, you know, early versions of Android, KitKat, things like that. It was very, very open. Um, and, you know, Google has tightened that down, and mainly that's because of, of security concerns. Right. Um, so, 
you know, one of the things when you're looking at a device and, you know, I know like all of your devices have that uh, SD660 chipset, right? So most of these, these devices, whether it's a phone or um, a, a mobile computer that, that Zebra makes, Qualcomm is the manufacturer of that chip. That's correct. And, yep. and, and, and Qualcomm and Google are, are, are tight, right? Um, they coordinate to do that. So, um, you know, the chips that, that you guys are shipping out today we, you know, at a minimum is going to support Android 11 may support previous versions, but Google and, right. and, 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 uh, and Qualcomm haven't come out and said that yet. So I think it's key that, you know, when you're, when you're making this investment, you want to invest in a product that's early in its life cycle. Um, so you get the longest runway, right. Um, you know, back to the, to the building services manufacturer, you know, when we were originally uh, proposing that opportunity, um, it literally came down to you and, and your top competitor, right? And your top competitor was much lower in price um, on the device. But what he wasn't telling the customer was the product that he was proposing was at the end of its life cycle and yours was at the beginning of its life cycle. Right. And, you know, they were desperate to do anything they could to push products. So they heavily discounted it. And, you know, when we sat down and we kind of looked at it and I said, you know, you got to look past, uh, I'm just buying it today. You're going to be using this technology for a minimum of, you know, five years, maybe seven years. It's probably the, the new sweet spot that I tell clients, right? You're going to start thinking about changing out these devices in five to seven years. Um, uh, you know, at that point, when he kind of looked at that, he's like, uh, we're going to go down the zebra route, right? I mean, it was, it was the manufacturer, wasn't your physical device that won that project for us. It wasn't anything that, that we were doing. Um, you know, we were helpful, obviously, and I think we were better than our competitors. But at the end of the day, you know, if I go back and I ask him, well, why did you, why'd you do that? He, he pointed right back and said, well, it was because of zebra, right? Their commitment to this market. And, and we just think that's a better long-term play for us. Was our lifeguard solution a part of that uh, conversation? It, yeah, it was just starting out. So that's that, that last piece, that support commitment, right? So, um, you know, as you know, if you owned an Android phone, um, eventually Google forces you to get off of that, um, that device because they don't support that operating system. Right. Um, again, one of those plays in, you know, consumers, consumer devices versus enterprise mobile computing devices. Um, if I'm buying a device and whether it's, you know, 10 devices or, you know, a thousand devices, um, I want to be able to run that as long as I can in my environment and not be forced to switch. So one of the things that you guys do in, with your relationship with Google is when, when Google ends the support of an operating system, um, you guys will provide security um, upgrades to that device for the next two versions of, of OS, right? So I think another three years, I think it's something along that lines is what you guys do. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a good example. So, you know, I have, uh, uh, you know, where, where that really kind of hits home um, is if you're a client that's using a browser application, right? Probably doesn't impact you that much when you go from, you know, NuGet to Oreo to 10, right? A browser's a browser. Um, but if you're a client that's using an Android application, Google will force the provider of that application now to move forward as well and discontinue support of their old app. So, um, you know, I'll go back to the, the Microsoft Dynamic um, uh, discussion. I have a client that, you know, used a free app that they got off the Google um, services um, okay. to download um, a number of years ago. And that app is no longer on there. They can't use it anymore. They have to use a newer OS. So they're forced to now buy a new mobile computer because they need um, at a minimum Oreo. I forgot what version they're on, but at a minimum they need Oreo. Um, so, you know, they're going to move forward and buy a device from us that's going to start on, on Android 10. And we know we're going to get 10 and 11 at a minimum, right? Uh, that's going to get them there. And, and we're hopeful we're going to get them up to 13 and beyond. Um, you know, that's, that's the hope that everyone's doing. But um, so, you know, the lifeguard really is important because it provides the security. But the other piece you got to think about is um, if you're running an Android app, you're going to be forced to move. Right. Or even if you're, you're you have other Android apps that support right. it, like device management and things like that, you're going to be forced to move. So, 
Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, you know, where we are there. And then, you know, again, with support commitment, um, you know, I have a very large, uh, retail client. They have about 3000 mobile computers. Um, they really want to have 7,000, mobile computers, yeah. but they can't afford it. Right. Um, so now that you guys have come out with a, that, you know, good, better, best approach, you know, they're yep. kind of using better computers now. Um, they're going to start rolling out the good computers because they all work the same way. They all, yeah. the same way. And effectively they could buy two of these good computers for every one of these better computers that they used to buy. Right. And now it's, now it's an affordable thing. And, you know, if you think about where they came from in the Windows space, they were running windows devices, I think for the same windows devices for 16 years in their store. Right. That's how old they were. I mean, it was to the point where, you know, you had to cannibalize other units to get parts for it. Right. You know, people don't even keep cars that long anymore. They, I mean. they, they don't. They don't. So <laughs> so now the, you know, the whole the, the, the idea there is, is they know there's a commitment. Hey, I'm probably going to be able to use this device for five years, seven years. And after that, guess what? There's going to be something that's better and probably cheaper. And it's going to give me more functionality that I don't have today. So it, it's going to be worth the investment because everyone's leveraging the mobile application, you know, in their case, in the store environment, you know, that employee is, is using all of that. That's really great, Mike. That's, uh, that's been a really great summary of what we got to look at as uh, all the factors that you need to make sure you're implementing the right solution. Um, but I definitely want to wrap this discussion up, but before we do that and, you know, mostly because you and I both probably need a snack at this point. Um, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, uh, I want to discuss with you what you think the future holds for this space and this uh, the enterprise mobile computing space, Android, anything else that you think is going to be important for customers to focus on. So we'll be right back. Sounds great. At Avalon Integration, we make OS migration easy with the Go Zebra Trade-In Program. Trade up your legacy technology for Android-powered devices and get up to $650 cash rebates per upgrade. All right, welcome back, everybody. Anthony Grasso from Zebra again and Mike Kula from Avalon Integration. Uh, we just wrapped up uh, a discussion on the factors you need to look at when implementing enterprise mobile computing. To wrap this up now, Mike, we really need to talk about what, what the future holds and really when I talk about the future, not just of the portfolio, but of our work for, workforce in this space, right? We, we definitely go into an evolution. Like you said, we're a couple of old dogs. We're used to certain things, right? But we have a new workforce coming into this space and they're used to certain uh, things that they on their consumer side of their life. Now it's in the, in, in the enterprise space. What do we have to worry about? Yeah, that's, that's uh that's a good one. You know, I have that conversation a lot with, uh, I was mentioning the two employees that, that, that I work with that on my team, um, that are much younger than me. Um, and it's funny because right. They don't, they don't know DOS. They don't, but they don't even, they can't even think about when you had to go manually change the TV. Right. Uh, oh yeah. Everything was remote control. Right. Um, but, uh, I think, you know, what, what's, what's interesting there is it's an exciting time for them in their career because they're going to see a lot of change in our market. I mean, that's, that's what I'm anticipating um, because I think the adoption of this technology is just going to continue to explode. Um, you know, I, I recently had someone coming to service my air conditioning unit in my house, um, and they're, they're a small HVAC company, um, you know, not too big, but, but, you know, decent size. And we actually have a service contract with them, right? And I, it was one of these, you know, 100 degree days and the air conditioner stopped and the house was getting hot and I'm working at home now because of yep. COVID. And I'm like, oh my God. Um, and, and I called them and they, uh, they said, well, we'll have someone over there within an hour. I was like, wow. And then I got a text message. Your technician is 30 minutes away. I was like, wow. Right. And then I got a text, me text message. Your technician has arrived. And, you know, he walked in with a mobile computer. Um, uh, luckily, there was nothing really wrong with, with the air conditioner. He was able to, I forgot Super. what he did, but he got it Super. working. So we were, we, were, we, were, we were back and getting cool air again. And then he, uh, he had me sign his thing and I got everything electronically. Right. Um, and I think about that and how that that worked, you know, years before, 
it was a lot of paper that he carried back and forth and that paper had to go back to the shop and then someone had to send something to you and someone had to file it. So, you know, and I waiting think, on the front end, not knowing when that service yeah. tech was going to show up to your house, yeah. you know, they tell you it's good. They're going to be there between, you know, eight and five. It's like, all right, yeah. now yeah. I got to sit yeah. around all day long waiting for somebody to come. Exactly. Exactly. So, so I think you're going to see a lot more increased adoption. Again, there's going to be a lot of uh, emphasis on price points and form factors. Um, you know, the certain clients are not going to need that high end. I can throw the device against the wall and stick it underwater and it's, it's still going to survive type of device. Right. And, and that, that really is, is important. It's important for partners like us because a, we have something to offer our clients. Um, and it's important for companies like zebra because you guys now are relevant. Right. right. You can play in that whole space. And, you know, when you think about that lower cost device, that's enterprise grade. Um, we actually did a, a retail client up in upstate New York. There were a series of lumber yards and the IT director says, well, I don't understand why I just wouldn't use a Samsung phone in my store. And her IT person said, because that one will last us longer and it's lower cost. And that was the zebra device. total cost of ownership. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. So, um, so I think that's you know form factors and price point is key, right? That's going to lead to adoption because people are going to look at at a business requirement and say, okay, if I could automate that, what is it going to cost? And if the benefit of that isn't you know higher than than the cost, um, then then they're not going to do that. Um, I think the other thing um, that we're seeing now was in the beginning when you guys started. Uh, releasing Android devices, you know, there was a tremendous amount of pressure from your management um, that was pushed on, you know, not only you guys as employees, but partners of, you know, push Android into the warehouse. We need, we need more people to adopt Android. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think one of the reasons why that didn't happen as quickly as everyone wanted in the beginning was, um, you know, the cart was before the horse, right? right? You guys had this great Android device. And I think what some of your first versions were all glass displays, right? With no keyboards, but all the clients were still running. Telnet. They didn't know how to use, they didn't know how to use a full glass display. That's it. They needed a keyboard, right? Um, that's shifted now, right? I don't see anyone deploying a new Telnet application, right? Everyone's deploying a browser application. Mm -hmm. uh, they may, they may still use a keyboard and you guys offer devices with keyboards and all glass. Um, so you, again, you have that, that flexibility in your form factor, but you know, we're seeing companies now repurpose those, those legacy applications, you know, that large retailer that I talked about that was using those devices for 17 years prior, repurpose all of their applications to graphical touch-based because their users, their store associates are, you know, college age, um, primarily, right? Right. So, so that's what they're, they're used to. You know, you try to give someone that, that old, you know, brick of a device that's got green screen and you got to push F2 and they kind of look at you like, you know, you got three eyes. Yeah. What's the F key? Um, well, I don't know what that is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Um, and then I think, again, uh, there's a lot of new apps, right? Apps that you can download off the, uh, the Google mobile services. Um, I know one, I think Disney, uh, I think you guys offer that as well in, in your app store. Um, you know, Disney had an app that they offered for free that allowed you to take the temperature. If you were a retailer, you know, like, and you had a, a, a case, a refrigerator case, you have to take the temperature, right? Okay. And a lot, a lot of people used to write that down on a clipboard. And, you know, you hoped if you were a, a large, let's say you owned a thousand convenience stores, you really hoped that everyone in all those convenience stores did that and wrote that down on a piece of paper. And God forbid someone didn't and the freezer broke and someone got sick, right? It's, 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 it's negative publicity to your name, right? To your brand. Absolutely. Um, now with adoption of mobile computers, you know, if someone didn't do that, because you can get an exception report and say, you know, store number 23 didn't do their check-in at three o'clock on their temperatures, on their, on their devices. Right. And I think Disney actually wrote an app. Um, and they offered it for free, right? Anyone that wants to do that because yep. Disney would do that in their own properties, right? They were like, hey, we want to make sure if you're at a Disney property that we're going to make sure that, you know, our, our food products that we're, we're offering to our guests are, are safe, right? And in order to do that, they had to have a mobile app to do that. Um, you know, I was recently, uh, the other day, I was in a drugstore 
and we're at the you know at the checkout line and we're ready to go. And uh, one associate gives the other associate a tablet. He says, "Good luck." Right. And then she walks away. <laughs> and I kind of looked at her. I said, what are you doing with the tablet? Just, you know, because I'm always interested in that. You know, right. Yep. Connie, my uh, my girlfriend goes, goes nuts. So I walk into a store. I'm like, oh, that's a, you know, LS2208 or, you know, <laughs> she's like, you're nuts. Right. With all that stuff. Um, but I asked him, well, what were you doing with the tablet? And she says, oh, well, we have to every week run through a training exercise and it comes from our training department or a message from our CEO or uh, something like that. And I was like, wow. And I never really thought about how did you do that prior to use of that technology or did you even do it prior to use of that technology? You had to do it on your own time or, you know, or, or just didn't get done. But now if I give everyone, you know, the use of a shared tablet as an example here, I know every associate has, has done that training and they've been right. made aware of, of what we wanted to do. So, um, you know, and then, you know, that leads you right into, you know, my famous one that I love is I'm a big Home Depot guy, right? I love going to Home Depot, love Lowe's as well, but I also like Home Depot. Um, and you know, Home Depot is a, a, a big Zebra user, right? Um, they got your TC70s deployed. And, you know, when I was in there, oh, maybe a year and a half ago, um, I needed to get some doorknobs because um, we were doing renovations on our house and um, I was doing it piecemeal. And it finally occurred to me one night, I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, you know, I better buy enough doorknobs for all the doors because they may stop making them one day. Right, right. They'll get discontinued or be out of stock. Yeah. yeah. So I, I went to my Home Depot and, you know, if you ever go and look at the, ho- the doorknob section at Home Depot, it's an aisle long. Yeah. Right, and they got green ones and red and blue, all these color codes, and I'm like, I have no idea what that is. I just know I want this type of doorknob. And I called the associate, and he came over and he took out his TC70 and he looked it up and he says, "We have two doorknobs here." He goes, "And I see on our truck that we just got a case in. Let me go in the back and get them." And before he left, his TC70 rang and he actually took a phone call on his device. And I said, how did, how did that work? And he says, Oh, if you call in and you need someone's help in hardware, you know, they used to broadcast it over the intercom, someone from hardware. Right. right. IT, and they go run down the aisle to pick up the phone. Correct. I has to, used to do that when I worked at Rickles. Remember Rickles? Years oh, ago? Long, long, long <laughs> no, Rickles. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so now, you know, when you call Home Depot or you call Lowe's, I know it works that way at Lowe's as well, because uh, they've started deploying your devices. Um, you know, and you want to speak to someone in hardware, they route the phone call right to them on that device, right? So, you know, no need for a walkie-talkie, right? Um, it's it's all one device that, all that's one. multimodal. Yep. Um, so again, a way to justify the cost of that device, right? Because now I'm not just doing one application like checking inventory. Well, I'm checking inventory. I can do price checks. I can answer phone calls, right? Um, I can look at my web page, right, in order. And I've actually had that happen in uh, in Home, Home Depot as well, where I needed something they didn't have in the store. And the person pulled up the, the thing and he says, you have your Home Depot card? And I said, yeah. And he said, here, let's order it right now. And I didn't even have to leave the aisle, right? He got me right then and there. Gave him my Home Depot card. He entered it in. He says, great, it's going to get shipped to your house. It's supposed to be there in five days, right? And to me, that's just a tremendous, you know, I, I've become accustomed to that. Um, so so that's, you know. Uh, it's improving customer satisfaction yeah. and improving the efficiency of the employees where that employee never has to leave the aisle. He could help three or four customers in a matter of minute, minutes. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then, you know, I think now, obviously you've been at home since March. I've been pretty much, you know, locked in at home since March with the, the uh, uh, pandemic that we're in right now. Um, I think there's a huge push towards wearable technologies, right? Um, I talked about my one, one large pharmaceutical client, right? They have wearable glasses, right? And, um, you know, that's still a le- little bit leading edge, right? A lot of people still aren't doing that because there's some, some caveats when you, when you deploy that type of technology, but it's, it's going to get here, right? Wearable, wearable glasses as a form factor has become very pervasive in our, in our space. Um, but I think, you know, I look at another client I have, which, um, pivoted to um, curbside delivery. They're a, a grocery store, 
right? So, you know, as you know, how curbside delivery works, you, you place your order and someone in the store walks around and picks the order and then they bring it to you or put it in the trunk of your car when you pull up. Um, and all of their, their devices, right, were in, um, in their hand and they needed a way to mount it on their wrist, right? So here's okay. an example of something that you guys did. You guys designed the wrist where the, it will sit up portrait mode because their application only worked in portrait mode and most wrist mounts are, are landscape mode. Um, and that was an easy fix. And, you know, they just gave each employee a wrist mount, right? And said, here, you can wear that wrist mount and it's yours. Right. And you right. just put the device on it when you need it. Or, you know, you guys recently came out with your ring scanner, right? Old ring scanners were shared, right? You took the whole ring scanner, trigger and all wristband, and you gave it to the next person to use. New ring scanners are the wristband, the trigger, you give that to an employee and then you plug the scanner onto it when you want to use it or unplug it, right? And put it in your locker when you're not using it kind of thing. So um, so I think this whole common component um, and, and having that to a, uh, giving that to a, 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 an employee to use so they don't have to share that stuff, but only share the mobile computing piece, again, is, is something that we're going to see, you know, happening more and more as time goes on. Um, and then I guess the last thing that I'm, I'm starting to see a lot more of, you know, we, you, you've heard about RFID forever. Yeah. Um, it's actually starting to become a real technology that's being used a lot. Um, um, you're starting to, you know, you've heard about low energy Bluetooth technology, which are, you know, beacons yep. that, that they can put in there and they can track and know where you are based on, you know, your mobile computer seeing a beacon. They, they can figure out, oh, you're over here or you're over there. And um, I know you guys had one type of uh, solution that you were demonstrating in your solution center where you put these beacons at dock doors that went in the trucks, right? So let's say I'm working in a, in a warehouse and I'm loading a truck and I'm supposed to put everything in, in the truck in bay number three, because that's the truck that's, let's just say, going out to Long Island for the deliveries. Correct. Right. I can guarantee you every client has had a case where I picked the right order, but I put it in put it on the wrong. Yeah. Put it the on wrong the truck. wrong truck and the driver doesn't know until he gets out there. Um, so the use of that low energy Bluetooth technology will allow you to know if I'm a user with the mobile computer and I'm picking an order that's supposed to go in the truck three and I'm walking in the truck two, it can alert me right away and say, wait, you're in the wrong spot. Right. Right. Because that, that isn't something that you would catch on a barcode scan. The, the, the person actually did something in error. No, the right? driver could get an alert on their mobile device exactly. saying, hey, your inventory might not be right here. Exactly. Or a supervisor. Right. Hey, there's stuff on this truck that we don't think is right. Right. And the person put it there. You need to go check. So um, so, you know. When I talk to you know Haley and Jason in, in our company, the you know what I call my 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 new crew, my younger crew, my younger teammates, um, they are um, you know they're in for a, a, a cool ride. There's a lot of neat things that are going to happen, and and you know the the opportunities are endless, right? Because there's always new things. I learn new things every day when I talk to clients uh, about the challenges they face. So. Um, you know, Android and where we are in mobile computing, along with your scanning technology and all the support behind it, um, really allows that to you know make that a, a, a reality and not just a, a dream. Yeah, and and Zebra has uh, has done a really good job over the last few years, also building out their network of ISVs that specialize in creating applications and solutions. Uh, on our mobile computing platform, many of which you know them, you've worked with so, yeah. so many of them already, um, yeah. and that just you know makes a, it's a makes a full rounded rounded solution for those customers. So, um, Mike, I definitely enjoyed this conversation. I think it was uh, very informational. I hope our listeners, viewers, found it very beneficial. I'm looking forward to our next conversation, but right now I'm really interested in in what's on the menu for tonight. <laughs> well, for tonight, tonight I'm on my own because um, Connie's working late, but for this weekend I am, uh, uh, for my birthday, I got a uh, uh, kind of a tripod thing that goes over my fire pit in my oh. yard. And um, I, I've been working on a uh, Jamaican jerk chicken recipe that that's going to be uh, uh, dinner for Friday night, I think. So, Got a couple half chickens. I, I got them marinating right now. And 
Um, so we'll, I'll, I'll send you a couple pictures. On All it. right. We'll make sure you get that base of coals nice and hot first. You don't want too oh, much flame. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to that, but awesome. All, All right. right. Well, enjoy that. We'll talk again soon. And again, thank you everybody out there. Thanks. Have a good day. See you later.